Oh, it's swell, Mom. Swell? It's tiny. Honey, this is a dorm room. They come in two sizes. Small and smaller. Hey, I think I grabbed the one by the window while the grabbing's still good. Yeah, he, he doesn't even have room to, uh, Honey, to study in here. Don't, Look, uh, I'm just concerned. Yeah. Let me help you unpack. I, I can do it. Don't be silly. I've been laying out your things for years. Besides, some of them are probably wrinkled by now. Uh, yeah, suppose we let them get settled, honey, huh? Yeah. Oh, please, come on now. Let him alone. He's, he's fine, okay? Donnie, see you outside. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. The plane for San Francisco doesn't leave till 5.20. That gives us a couple of hours to take a kind of cook's tour around here before you leave. Well, you go ahead, Dad. I'm going to stay a couple of days just to make sure Donnie's settled in. Huh? Donnie is settled in right here. Haven't you noticed, huh? Anyway, uh, we're invited to have dinner with the undersecretary at 8 o'clock tomorrow evening, and I promised you'd be there. I don't keep promises made on my behalf by overbearing fathers. This one you will. Are you ever going to stop treating me like a little girl? Are you ever going to stop treating Donnie like a little boy? You've been talking to Sam. Donnie. Oh. And what exactly did he have to say about me? Oh, nothing he could say to your face, honey, because he loves you so much he just wouldn't want to hurt you. Mom? Sir? Uh... Well, I don't think I can make dinner tonight. Well, see, Roy just showed up. That's my roommate. And, well, they're having this mixer tonight over at St. Agnes, and everybody's going. Hmm? It's okay, isn't it? I mean, you don't mind. Of course not. Well, we have to leave around 5 anyway, some big deal in San Francisco. I guess I have to show my face around before I head back to the Philippines. Do you mind? Oh, sure, it's okay, Mom. Hey, listen, come on. I want you to meet Roy. Mm. He plays a little football. Comes from Boston. All-state halfback. I <laughs> bet, huh? He's up in the dorm. We gotta find the boys, Mel. Oh, man, yeah, we gotta find... What do we gotta find the boys for? Well, we just gotta find them, that's all. I'll tell you what we gotta find. We gotta find ourselves some fun, and I ain't talking about the boys. How much money you got? Four bucks. I got myself two dollars. Why don't we take our bones on down to Mama Louise's place and see what we can find? Crazy. We'd be in and out of there in ten minutes. Then we'd be flat broke. Then what'd we do? Hey, Mel, what do we got here? Hello there. Hey. You waiting for a bus, honey? I might be. Might be, huh? Look out, everybody. Here she comes. Mirapost Road Special. All aboard is getting aboard. This is Red. My name is Mel. My name's Vivian. Like Vivian Lee. Who? The movie star. You like the movie, Sonny? Sure. How about if me and Red took you to a movie? Okay. Come on. What are we going to see? We will see anything that you want to see. Isn't that right, Red? That's right, Mel. Do you want some coffee? No, thank you. All right. See you in the morning. Acton says it looks good for the war college. Well, they'll be leaving in six weeks or so. How nice for you, Court. Can't you bend a little? What do you mean? Conversation. I'm doing my part, Court. The Major's lady, suitably charming and well mannered. It's all you really want from me. Are you so sure? Oh, really, Court? Something more? What? Certainly nothing physical. No. Nothing like that. Obviously. Well, what then? We have to make each other so lonely. 
Relationships are built on giving, Court. I gave it all years ago. You've never had anything to give. Not to me or anyone. I'm sorry, Court. I really am. I mean, it's no fun for me either. Major Massingale? Yes. I'm sorry. May I ask you to come with me, sir? What's the matter? It's about your daughter. Ginny? She's all right, ma'am, but we're holding her. This way, sir. Come in. Jimmy, baby, are you all right? Major Massingale, I am Captain Nagase. I am awfully sorry to have inconvenienced you, sir. What's going on here, Captain? Shortly after one o'clock, your daughter was discovered in Reef Park in the company of two naval personnel. No. I am sorry, madam. The arresting officer at first thought that your daughter was, I find it, rather hard to state delicately. You've stated it, Captain. Just what are the charges? For the moment, creating a public nuisance. It is the best that I can do. Short of dropping the charges altogether. The shore patrol has been notified. A report has been filed. I am awfully sorry, sir. I do believe your daughter's name can be withheld, sir. The judge may also be disposed to a hearing in chambers. Thank you, Captain. Emily. You can't be tired. Must have run near 40 miles. 43 and 20 more before we go stop. It's our way. 
can't keep up with us, I'll give you a man to show you the way. You can join us later. Don't worry. I'll keep up. Why didn't I? Why didn't I? Why didn't I? Why didn't I? Wounded men back there. They will say nothing. What about the Japanese? You know what they'll do. They will say nothing. Sunson, for losing my temper with you. That's my fault, Lynn. I shouldn't have questioned your order. If we had waited, the enemy would have caught up with us. In any case, he would have died. You knew him well? He was my nephew. You do not see it, do you, Sunson? This is not a war of soldiers. This is a war of people. Farmers, shepherds, their wives, their children. 400 million soldiers who cannot be defeated. Not if the war were to last a century. Can you understand that? Yeah, I think so. I wonder. for the day that I can set aside my weapons and return to my classroom. Plinho dreams of once again tending his herd. Kaidan, his farm, the river delta. But you, you, San San, a professional soldier. What can you dream of except a war to follow a war? It's not my dream, then. A hero's death in battle, then. Your alternatives are few. In an old fable, it is told that once an eagle 
stricken with an arrow, said when he saw the fashion of the shaft. By our own feathers, not by another's hand, are we now smitten. Be careful, Sancho. Be careful that you do not learn to love war too well. Quiet tonight. Well, maybe I just don't like the company. I'm sorry. Oh, not you. Don't blame it on court, Ben. If Sam had wanted to stay, he could have. Yeah, I know. I just hated to see him get on that plane with a knife planted in his back. Fricassee. <laughs> Here we have the chickadee. What happened? Did he finally get it right? The woman overcome with envy. Who emptied my glass? Huh? You heard the lady? Who emptied her glass? The merry widow herself. Who, me? Yes, you, just before you waltzed off with my husband. Yes, no problem at all. I'll go back to the well and fill up the bucket. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, all the way around for table four, please, my brother. Let me catch this one. I got it. No, please, put it on my tab. I've got it. Look, Ben, I recommended Sam for that China mission. I can't major play. knock it off, huh? Plant your sweet, rosy kisses on somebody else's backside. I don't like you. You don't like me. Let's leave it like that, huh? Thank you. This week, you get the tall one because you're beautiful, oh. <laughs> and you get the other one because you're a dream, and you just start drinking. <laughs> Pardon me, Major. Am I stepping on your toes? Only occasional. <laughs> understand you're leaving us next week. Sad but true. Cram course at the War College. Ever since Poland, they're finally beginning to take the Germans seriously. Even Chamberlain's become a believer. Well, I guess you'll be seeing Emily and Jenny sooner than you thought, huh? Yes, I suppose. Strange how quickly they decided to go back to the States. We hardly had a chance to say goodbye. Ginny's school. They insisted she'd be there by the middle of the month. Of course, Emily had to traipse off after her. Lucky Jenny. Did you know, Court? I'm not allowed to be that good a mother. Something about letting the little tadpole grow up to be a frog all by himself. Oh, no, 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 I, um, uh, I just need some air.
I'm sorry, sorry, Miss Damon. I didn't mean to rile you none. I'm uh, Alvin Mary, you know. Uh, oh. oh, yes, of course, Lieutenant. I didn't recognize you with the eye patch and all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I seen you back in there when you hightailed it out, you know. I, I just kind of figured I might be able to help you out a little bit. I just wanted some air. Yeah, it must be awful hard for a gal with all this fun and everything going on around here. She ain't got no husband. Well, maybe that's why it's fun. Yeah. I ain't got no woman either. I know that ain't no fun. No fun at all. Easy, Lieutenant. Yeah, you got me paid. <laughs> Easy, Alvin. That's me. Easy to take. You'd better be careful, or I'll cross your path. Seven years bad luck, you know. Oh, no, no. You ain't, you ain't bad luck. Lieutenant. When you give me that high sign in there, I kind of figured you'd be popping out of here. No, we can go down to the beach a little ways. Ain't nobody down there. Let go now, of hold me. Hold on. Wait, wait just a minute. Leave me alone. Don't play no games with me now. You're hurting me. You are playing games with me, aren't you, Missy? No. You're having a little fun with easy, Alvin? No. Well, that ain't nice. No. Oh. <laughs> Husband. Your husband? No. Ain't that something? I've been thinking about that old boy today. Do you know that? Oh. <laughs> I've been on him. No. I've been on him for a long, long oh. time. Oh. And this just might be the place oh. to square things between him and me. Do you know that? Get out of here, Merrick. Now! I think I'm going to kill you, Fancy Pants. I don't think so. You don't know me very well, friend. I ain't still a lieutenant after 24 years, because I've been a good boy. You know that. Don't nobody or nothing scare me when I set my mind to something. If it's a killing you want, Merrick, make sure you do a good job. On me and her. Because so far you're guilty of drunken, disorderly, attempted rape, and you're about to add assault with intent to kill. And that ought to get you about 10 to 15 years in your own stockade. Think about that, Merrick. All those people who just love to get you there on the wrong side of the bars. Court. Oh. Did he hear you? Oh no, I'm all right. It's really starting to come down. Come on, the car's right over here. You are sobbing. Take my cake. I need a drink. Tommy. Thomas. I don't have any. We can go back in if you want. No, no, take me home. What about your wrap? I'll get it in the morning. isn't it? At least it's dry. Oh, God! It's all right. Come on. Merrick won't bother you anymore. Oh, it's not Merrick, Court. It's me. I've just been wandering around for weeks. Sam gone. Donnie gone. Emily gone. <gasps> Jenny gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at us, Court. Aren't we hilarious? Pathetically hilarious. Two pieces of flotsam bobbing aimlessly about. No. No, you were never aimless. You've always known exactly what you've wanted and gone after it. Me? Well, what about you? Kindred souls. Oh, God. Lost.
lost along the way. Or it just never got started. Too bad we'll never know. Well, why not? We still have a week before you fly away. Shall we make the most of it? One mad romantic fling. Start here and there and no regrets. Tempting. Come on, Court. You've been propositioned. At least you could kiss me or something. You're delightful when you're drunk. Why don't we find out? I know. Oh, oh, please, Court. I need someone now. Tommy, you're just not thinking straight. Oh, oh Court, do I have to beg? Mm. I can't! I can't do it to Sam. You can't. You really can't. Emily said once... Said what? She was drunk. I, I thought it was a joke. She... Oh. Oh, Court, I didn't know. Tommy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Tommy? Tommy! Wait! What do you say, hotshot? Hold easy, Alvin here, boy. That's what she said. You run me off, Major. Cause I let you run me off, boy. You were right, though. Two million people out there. Some of them old birds might have seen me fall on that little gal. Ain't nobody here now, boy, but just you and me and... Pretty soon. Pretty soon, they're just gonna be you. I don't give a damn. Ow. Hey, what's going on? Halt! You all right, Major? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Halt it! Halt! Hey, Charlie! It's the lieutenant. He's dead. Dear Dad and Mom, gosh, it was good seeing you again. Especially you, Dad. Those 17 months in China didn't hurt you a bit. You look terrific. Not sure you're right about the Japanese. Feeling here is that China's given them more than they can handle. Not just my opinion, but everybody's. Anyway, for my money, FDR's too smart to get dragged into somebody else's war. The British people and their Grecian allies need ships. From America, they will get ships. Increases which will bring all four of them to a total still below peacetime strength as authorized by the Congress. Every plane, every other instrument of war, old and new, we will send over... The latest returns show President Roosevelt rolling up substantial majorities over his... Republic. This selective service provides the most democratic as well as the most efficient means for the mustering of our manpower. We have heard orators, 
beating their breasts and proclaiming against sending the boys of American mothers to fight on the battlefields of Europe. That I do not hesitate to label as one of the worst fakes in current history. Hope you're paying, Dad. You brought these hustlers up here. It takes patience. Glass looks a lot like diamonds and you'll start to grind it down. We're gonna have to stop easing up on these boys, George. I suppose I really ought to make an effort to go to church one of these Sundays, but there's so many guests. Is it required, Mrs. Damon? Mrs. Damon? Excuse me. I was just asking you about church. Is it required for you people? I mean, uh, some sort of regulation? Not yet. The Germans will be drinking Uncle Joe's private stock in the Kremlin by Christmas. Believe me. Not a chance. They're in the suburbs already, riding on the streetcars. Oh, they may get into the city, but they won't get into the Kremlin. And I always give you army boys some credit for being smart. The Germans are unbeatable. Better not let the boys in Congress hear you say that. They'll be moving to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You do. You have done a heck of a job on Roosevelt. Got the whole country going crazy. You got everybody convinced that Goring's going to bomb the capital, huh? Or Hawaii. Or the Philippines. Goring? Oh, no. You mean the Japs, huh? The Japs have got their hands full with China. What do they want to war with us for? They're smart businessmen. They know what they want. They're willing to pay for it. Yeah, I remember seeing your ships steaming out of the harbors over there loaded with scrap iron. You know what they're going to make out of that scrap iron? George? Hmm? George telephoned. Sounds like the Presidio. Oh, thank you, Helen. Hmm. Yeah, this is General Caldwell. What? No, wait a minute. Say that again. When? Where the hell did they come from? I see. Oh, Sam, turn on the radio, will you? Go ahead. I know. Bob. The bomb was struck at 7.55 this morning, Hawaii time inflicting severe damage no, no, to the no, Pacific I, I, fleet I, I, anchored at Pearl Harbor. The Japanese squadrons, apparently launched from carriers somewhere north of the islands, flew in low, skirting the mountains and making only cursory passes at other military installations. The main thrust of the attack centered on the giant warships anchored helplessly in the harbor. Early reports indicate severe damage and heavy losses. Few ships escaped the fury of the attack. Among the warships known to have been sunk are the battleships Arizona and California. The Oklahoma took at least six torpedoes and capsized where she was berthed. Of the 96 vessels anchored as the first wave of attacking Japanese hit the harbor, one lone destroyer was able to get underway. Extensive damage has also been reported at... Hey, it's a great day outside. Tomorrow, what's the matter with you guys? No estimate of aircraft lost has yet been made by Army personnel at the air base. To repeat... At 7.55 this morning, Hawaii time, the first of the waves of attacking Japanese dive bombers attacked the U.S. naval fleet at Pearl Harbor. Emily! What is it, Mama? The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor. Finally, Mama. Courtney finally got his war. How are you, Phil? It's fine, sir. They're just about to start, sir. The lower boardroom. General Marshall? Yeah, he's arriving tonight. Hawaii's on full alert. All the beach installations are being manned full strength. The Japs will never go for a wall. They got the fleet. MacArthur's the one who'll take the brunt. Donnie? Yes, yes, I'll get him for you. Dad, it's for you! Well, I'll take it up here, honey. You better get packed. If we can get out of here by 10, we'll make a word in the morning. I'm not leaving until I get through to Donnie. Oh, damn it, Tommy. The lines are jammed. He's safe enough for now anyway. 
the attack comes, it's going to be this coast. You're not serious. They're not going to attack here. Why not? Our fleet's disabled. Our shore defenses are a joke. We're undermanned. Sam, that's back home. The Japs just hit Manila. Huh. They wiped out half our planes on the ground. They had a 10-hour warning. What in the hell are they doing over there? Don't ask me. Ask MacArthur. Anyway, Coast Command has uh, ordered a full alert all up and down the seaboard, so if you want to make ord, you better leave right now. Yeah, right. Tommy? You go ahead, Sam. I'm going to wait for Donnie's call. Now, wait a minute. You can talk to him tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. You've heard the news reports. They're already lining up at the draft boards. Tommy, you're getting yourself all upset, and it may be for no reason at all. Can you promise me that, Sam? No. Well, then I'll make you a promise. Our son is not going off to fight in your war. I'll see to that. Now, just who in the hell do you think you are? Dad. Now, let me tell you something, Tommy. We're in this one, ready or not. And you're along for the ride, whether you like it or not. Now, now maybe Sam is reluctant to say this to you, but I'm not. George. Now, wait a minute, Sam. Oh, this has to be said. I'm sick of your belly aching. And I'm sick of you trying to blame me and Sam or anybody else who tries to hold this country together. I'm not blaming you. Good. Because now we have just two choices. Either we stand and we fight, or else we throw down our guns and start to try to redecorate the White House to suit the Japanese emperor. Now, which is it to be? Now, you make up your mind. But he's only 19. They're all only 19, Tommy. That's the hell of it. Hello? Yes, operator, put him through. Hello, Donnie? Oh, yeah, yeah, Roy? Yeah, put Donnie on, will you? He what? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, thank you. Donnie and some of the other boys drove over to Philadelphia to the recruiting office. They're going to enlist first thing in the morning. Oh, Sam. Sam, you've got to stop him. Stop him? How? Call, uh, call Philadelphia, the, the area commander. You can do it, Sam. No, I can't. You mean you won't. Look, Tommy, it's his decision. Nobody's forcing but, him to do but anything. But he doesn't have to know about it, Sam. You can, you can arrange to have a Tommy. physical. Tommy? Not exactly ocean liners, Sarge. What they'll do. Thank you, sir. Are you sure they'll make it to the other side? I never took them for a joyride, sir. That's just how I found them. Okay, Sam. Say you get maybe 10, 12 guys in each one. That's not exactly a regiment. What if we run a couple of lines across? Ferry 10 men over, send the boat back, ferry 10 more. All the Japs help us unload and bring us Saki. Wonderful. 
What do you think, Sarge? It's possible, sir. Ben, you got a better idea? Are you kidding? I'm only a light colonel trying to make it through the weekend. Besides, McKelvey will never buy it. He's all set to sit in his dead butt till Port Morris be freezes over. Forget I said that. Said what, sir? Ben, we're crossing this river with or without McKelvey. Let's go. General, are you saying this attack was adequately prepared and executed? I don't know what the hell you mean by adequate. I've got complete confidence in my staff. We do the best we can with what we've got. If only we were sent one half of what the South Pacific gets I every day in the week. that, General? You may not. Shifkin, you have no idea what conditions are like on the line. Yes, I have, General. I've seen them. Three perfectly good M3 light tanks over their bogies in mud and water. Excuse me. Ease off. You know they have to expect losses in an operation like this. Yeah, right. Joe, you chow down while you can and stand by. Sarge? Yes, sir. Not a word about this for the time being, huh? See if we can sell this man some used boats. A night crossing. Oh, Sam, that's the toughest operation in the book. You can't just take these boys and are so weary. Just the point, sir. We're getting the cream kicked out of us. The frontal assaults are only wearing us down. If we can hit the Japs on that river. Their defenses are weak because the river's so wide. I don't know. I know, General. Look, I fought these guys for a year and a half in China. You observed, Sam. Yeah, with a rifle in one hand and a grenade in the other. Look, Mac, I know how they think, how they're going to react. General MacArthur did order that air. I know that. If only it wasn't so risky. It's terribly risky. Four native boats. Look, we can catch them by surprise. We can cave in their position, go through to the beach and come in behind their bunkers. It's a hell of an idea, General. Sam, I'll have to give this serious thought. General, there isn't time to think. All right, Sam! I said I'd think about it. Rotten, stinking country. Serious uh, meetings, more consideration. Don't stop talking about it and start doing something. The Japs are going to be all over Darwin next week using us for a springboard. I'm with you. What's this? A meeting of the disenchanted? Hi, right, Frenchie. You guys want to laugh? G2 sent down an estimate of enemy true strength between Waterboo and the airstrip. They said it was between seven and eight hundred. What'd you do? You have to count noses? You can't even find them. No, let's count them. Yeah, they must have got this from Haley. Huh? You know what that idiot did yesterday? Sent up a little air support. Dropped 10,000 pounds. Right on top of us. You lose any men? Yeah, four. Colonel Damon? Would you come with me, sir? It's the general. He's been taken to the infirmary. I'll be okay, Sam. Just a bug or something. A couple of days, I'll be fine. I heard from Dickinson over at Badger. They've been stopped cold along the right flank. General, look, what about the river crossing? Sam, I don't think so. We can't take any more losses. Six effective battalions, that's all we got left. I don't want to take the chance. Just hold, hold. Wait for Badger. Maybe they'll get moving.
How is he? Bad. Sir, Colonel Dickinson at Badger on the field phone. Colonel Damon. Yeah, Dick. Yeah, that's right. He's down. I'm acting divisional commander. No, I'm sorry. That's out of the question. We're all set for the river crossing tonight. That's right, the Wataboo. General gave his okay at 1,500 hours. We're set to jump off at 2230. Are you crazy? They'll court-martial you. Yeah, Dick, that's affirmative. 2230 hours, a night attack. 